Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Katie and today I'm going to be swatching my color pencils. I have both professional and um, inexpensive um, everyday pencils that anybody can find anywhere pretty much. And so what I'm going to do, I have them in this little case. Um, you can find this on Amazon. Sorry if my, I'm going to pull that up just a little bit. There we go. Um, you can find this on Amazon. I have my sketching pencils, um, as well as my color pencils. I don't have a lot. Um, I actually put in some of the inexpensive ones because sometimes I just like to play around with color and just, um, just play. And so I don't want to use my, um, you know, really expensive ones to, um, just sketch. So that's what these are. Um, this is a set of Prang. They actually do really well. I mean, you know, inexpensive, budget, um, however you want to call it, color pencils actually do really well. Um, and I like these. They work, and I have a good collection of them. Um, I have Crayola's Colors of the World. I actually purchased these because I was teaching um, children's art classes last year, and um, we were doing self-portraits. And... This really excited them being able to find a color that matched them. And so we, we would let, that was part of the lesson. They would um, try out all the colors and literally match it up against their skin tone to find the one that matched them. This is a set of watercolor pencils. I'm not swatching these out today um, just because I'm not doing watercolor um, pencils right now. Um, I have my Faber Castell, my Gold Faber and my Polychromos. These two don't fit over here, so that's why they're over here. Um, and I have some swatch cards that I have already made up. This is on um, watercolor paper, but I wanted to see how they how they handle texture. So I have one for my praying. I have not put the names down. Um, the Polychromos, I do have them labeled by the um, way they're going in here. Um, and the same with the Gold Faber, and then I have my Colors of the World set up and ready to go. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk, talk you through the inexpensive ones first. The real budget, um, we're going to start with the lowest budget and go up. So, the Prang are one of the lowest budget ones that I have. I do have Crayolas, um, I just did not have room in here to organize them. Um, so... These are the Prang, and we're going to start over here because it's going to take both back and front, and I'm going to do the neons and everything, neons and specialty ones over here. So, what I'm going to do is we're just going to get started and see um, how this is. Sorry about this bright light in my room. Um, I'm actually going to come back in a second. Let me fix that. All right, I got the lighting fixed, and here we go. So I'm going to start with the green. This one is a light green, and um, my biggest thing is I like to see how much dust comes off of it. And how light I can get. there if you notice there is some dust coming off of it but not too bad so yeah and I'm just gonna put them back in as I go sage green Aqua green. Yellow green. 
didn't realize this one is not sharpened. This is my favorite pencil sharpener for color pencils. It is a Prismacolor um, sharpener. You can sharpen with a short point or a long point, and I prefer a long point. And so yeah, I really, really like it. It's a little on the expensive side. I think I paid like $8 for it. Um, use a coupon when you go to Michael's and, you know, you can get a coupon for it. Yeah, these do not have a lot of dust. Have a little bit. And that's normal. That's that's just from pretty much the point being coming off as I'm coloring too hard. But they're not breaking very, um, and I'm coloring pretty hard. So leaf green. There's definitely a lot of greens um, in this range. And I like greens. I, don't, I mean, and there we go. See, that's the first time that one's happened. That's happened to me with these. That the lead has broken off. Let me get this sharpened again. Well, this one's just going to be, this one is just going to keep breaking on me. Still a point, it's just a thinner, I mean, it's just a nubbier one. All right, there we go. This is just green. We're on the last of our greens. This is pine green. These are not, um, like I said, these are not really giving me a lot of dust, um, and they are um, covering pretty well, and um, yeah, light fastness, you know, these are not going to be the true, you know, really light fast um, pencils, because they are inexpensive, but if you're just using them in a sketchbook, this is turquoise, or you're going to scan your artwork, which, you know, that's sometimes I do. Sometimes I like the colors that come in these budget sets. And I just, you know, I use them for artwork that I'm going to scan. And then I'm not really worrying about the original. So basically, if it's going to be in my sketchbook and I end up, oh, I really like that. I want to use it for something else. I will scan it in. Um, yeah, I'm not going to use these if I'm going to sell them for, you know, sell an original piece, but they work, you know, they work pretty good. So, this video may end up being a couple of parts. This one, the one before was light blue, or sky blue, and this is just blue. So, I may do part one, part two, part three of this, just because this is going to get pretty long, especially with this one. This one's ocean blue. And you can see we've got a really good range of colors um, here with these, and the coverage is pretty good. Especially on this um, very textured um, watercolor paper. This is dark blue. It's just a tad bit darker than blue. Violet. These are a little bit harder. Um, they're not very soft. 
which, you know, in some respects I like that because they keep a point better than the softer pencils. Um, softer pencils have a place. This is Moonlight Blue. Um, but these harder pencils, you know, they really do, you know, you do are able to get a good detailed um, piece with it. You know, you can really make some nice lines. This one is just purple or move. Um, yeah, this is not really purple to me. This is more mauve. But I really, really like these, like I said, for, you know, using in my sketchbook, um, dark rose, because I can get on this watercolor paper, I can get a pretty deep, um, saturated, not a lot of white showing through color with these color pencils. Um, you'll notice some of my more expensive color pencils are so soft, I can't really get, I can't really color this hard with them. And I am pressing pretty hard on this first start of each one of these. But I really, really do. Um, these are great for if you, you know, are just starting out, you don't um, want to spend a lot of money you don't know if you're gonna like it. These color pencils are a different medium. They, you know, they're um, they're just, you know, different. And so, magenta. Now the first, the first one, that one prior to that was salmon and red, salmon red, and dark rose. And now we're on magenta. Well, I just broke that point. One thing I say, you know. Don't sharpen it to where it's like a needle point. You don't need a needle point. Unless you're not gonna bear down as hard as I am. But I am bearing down pretty hard. And then we have pink. You can see the difference. See how dark you can get with these. The next one is called natural. And this one, this one is pretty good. It's a peachy color. And then we have peach. Almost, I would think the um, natural is more like an almond color. Pumpkin. It's the last day of September as I'm filming this, and it's definitely pumpkin season. I like pumpkin spice, but I'm not as a major fan of pumpkin spice. I mean, I'm not a die-hard pumpkin spice fan. All right, now we got orange. Like I said, I'm bearing down pretty hard on these. They're not very crumb. They're not all crumbly. Certain tech, certain colors are a little more crumbly than others. Like that orange. We're getting into the lighter oranges. This is going to be yellow orange. And harvest yellow. thinking I may just write the name beside it instead of doing it over here so I can, I don't know, let's see. 
olive green. This doesn't really look like olive green. It looks pretty yellow. It looks like almost like a um, Naples ochre. My goal uh, after swatching all of these is to actually swatch based on color. Um, like doing a sheet um, that has all of the colors on it, lemon yellow, that um, by color family. And just write down the brand beside it. Now this is very light. Um, it's actually showing up better on camera than it actually is showing it brighter but it's light then we have just yellow yeah I really like the the range of yellows it's not many for because normally a cheaper brand from what I understand yellow is a cheaper one to make so a lot of the cheaper pencils this is golden yellow will cheaper brands will fill up their range with a lot of yellow because yellow is an inexpensive pigment to use. All right, so now we've got one more golden yellow that is called tangerine. I don't know if you can read that, but yeah, some, sometimes these are a little bit hard to read. And I would have thought tangerine would have been orange, not this brownie yellow. But there we go. Now we have a couple of more of these. This is rosewood. And berry red. Sorry if my hand's in the way, I'm trying to hold this paper. So the color range is, on this is actually really good. Um, this is the 48 set, I'm actually missing a couple. Alright, so now let's get into the browns. I love brown. Um, Sienna, and sometimes I sharp, like I said, I sharpen it too much, and that little bitty tip point will come off. Plum. Um, the barrel does not match the color. Look at this. It does not match that color. That's why I, when I was organizing these, I organized them based on the color of the barrel. And, yeah, this one is brown. So my colors don't really, that's why I like doing these swatch charts. Because based on the barrel, I would have not thought that color would have come out of it. Cocoa. Sepia. I use a lot of sepia. Um, I don't like using black a lot in my work. I like doing sepia. I don't know. I just, I just think it looks or either a dark Payne's gray, which we're about to get into the grays now. This one is, it says moss green, but it is a gray. So it should be called moss gray, not moss green, because this does not look like green at all. Then we have cool gray. That's another thing I like about this. There's cool colors in their gray. They've got a cool gray 
and a warm gray. So it's a good range of grays. Warm gray. And I will even use warm gray instead of black as well because it's dark enough to get a dark value. All right, now I'm gonna go back to do my black. And I can get a good black, I can get a pretty good coverage with the black. The reason I like to see how well it goes out lightly is so that I know I can mix, which look, we're gonna see how the mixing is gonna do in a minute. Um, I also have some neon colors. We have neon yellow and it is definitely neon. I don't use a lot of neons in my work because one, it's very hard to scan and it doesn't print well. Um, neon pink. Even though I do like um, upper rows in um, Holbein's acrylic wash. This is neon orange and they are very transparent. It's not really even covering when I do very hard and then we have neon green definitely a very transparent color I also have a white which there's no reason for me to even swatch this white on this paper because you can't see it but I did it anyway all right so now we've got silver and gold so let's see how metallic the silver is right now it doesn't look very metallic yep there's no shine to it it's just a silver tone and then this is gold now this one looks more gold than the silver does silver yeah so now let's see how some of these mix like I like to do um, salmon and this golden yellow because it looks more like a mustard. So I'm just going to lightly. It does build up pretty well, especially on this paper. blend I got using salmon and golden yellow. Golden yellow is more on the warm side. Let's find a cool yellow just using yellow and sky blue and let's see how this works. Sky blue, yellow, just keep building it up. Sometimes I'll turn my page and just cross hatch it. It's not a smooth blend, but it's a blend. So yeah, I really, you know, these are great if you want to get started in, in um, color pencils and you don't want to spend a lot of money or you don't have a big budget to spend. These do work really well. 
And again, these are the Prang color pencils. Um, it's the large set, and you can get them, you know, most of the time around um, school time. Yeah. So, um, I will be swatching another set in my next video, but, you know, this is the first in the series of the, ch the differences between a budget-friendly set and a more expensive set. So what I'm going to do in my next video, at the end of all these videos, I will um, will compare the two, or compare the different brands. So this is the first. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button and um, click subscribe, and I'd love to have you in my subscribing to my channel.